everybody, and welcome back to Higher Density Living. You are joined with me, Alexander McKeg, and a special guest today, who is our ray of light. And uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go with that as your real name. It's just gonna be Ray of Light. Does that work? Yeah, that's great. R E I on my birth certificate and driver's license. It says Ray of Light. I get just get stopped by police and. Yeah, I'm sorry. This is Ray of Light. <laughs> <laughs> Can't Middle name of that. last name Light. <laughs> And um, I'm glad you're here in the studio. Uh, we've had quite a few guests on, uh, many of them virtual, but having you here is kind of nice. It's refreshing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we were introduced through a mutual friend. Yes, we were. Yeah. And uh, you live here in Santa Fe, correct? I do. And where did you move from? <laughs> here we go. Yeah. I moved you from owe me these. New you owe me these York. answers. For, for those who are listening, watching, you were recently introduced by this friend mm-hmm. where, where the podcast really began. With your questioning, that's yeah. it, it had already begun at that. So this is just a, a filling in. We didn't get to answer all the questions. Not even remotely close. We barely scratched the surface. You were there. You showed up. You said something interesting. And then I started hammering you with questions. Exactly. And we said, maybe let's table that for the podcast. And look. And here we are. At a table. I now get to get hammered. It's a deluge. Yeah, that's a correct. thunderstorm of questions. Absolute thunderstorm of I'm questions. Exci- I'm, I'm excited. I'm here for it. Okay. Moved from New York. Sorry. I moved here technically from Los Angeles, California, mm-hmm. post pandemic kind of move, but I am from New York, Long Island, New York. Originally. Super cool. Yeah. Super cool. And like, what was, you know, first and foremost, I love this place. I love New Mexico. Mm-hmm. What was the draw for you? I don't even, what was the, what caused you to even be here? What was it? Most people don't even know about this place. Yeah. So I had a partner who lived here for 10 years. Um, so we had visited yearly for about five years while mm. we were together. And then we moved out of LA during the pandemic together, promptly broke up. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and then, you know, got catapulted out of LA, uh, didn't know where we were going next, uh, but split parted ways. And then um, I was doing sort of a documentary film making project with a friend, road tripped. What were, you, what were you filming? You can't just burn through that. What, what was the documentary about? It was, you know, it was right around the 2020 election cycle. Okay. And so it was like the state of the country, the dividedness, um, but trying to find stories of people and place. And what conclusion did you find? Was there unity? We had some good conversations. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the big pieces that actually ties into why I'm here. Um, was the relationship with land and place as a potential unifier for people, especially those who actually care for the land and finding this actually interesting juxtaposition juxtaposition between people who are tech, who are traditionally conservative hunters, farmers, etc., who actually have a very deep understanding of the land, taking care of watersheds because of duck and like the, mm-hmm. the game that they shoot um, and this sort of, you know, liberal side of things that like also cares about the land, but from a different sort of like ideological perspective. So which one's more important, the actual ideological or the objective caring for it? Well, I think that that was the invitation was to come together around what it is that we actually do. What's your opinion? I think action is important. Mm -hmm. And that real uh, relationship and conversations potentially within the context of the action, right? As opposed yeah. to, I think um, there's a great um, author, architect named Christopher Alexander, who talks about, he wrote this whole book called Pattern Language, which is actually, uh, it's a it's a method for building, but has been adopted by the programming, like computer programmer developer world uh, as the basis for object-oriented programming. And what he talks about in the book is how, you know, if you get a bunch of people together around the table and talk about how a hospital should be built on the hill, you will get all different ideas about, you know, method, you know, where things should go and why because of all these ideas and beliefs. But if you get everybody together and you look at the hill and you say, where should the entrance be? (laughs) then generally there's kind of a consensus. Yeah, that's correct. Um, And so I think that there is real power in, yeah, like actually doing things together. And I think on top of that, 
you know, rather than just having an ideology, actions sometimes or most of the time carry ideologies within them. Mm -hmm. So I find that the leftist side of that appropriation of completely equalized and centered and totally apolitical, I think that the leftist side of their ideologies create a lot of inaction. Yeah. Um, And I do appreciate the other side of the approach, you know, which you would classify, I guess, in the sense of your documentary, the conservatives who say, let's go out and actually do this thing because Mm -hmm. it aligns with our lifestyles. So they take their ideology, but go out and objectively Mm -hmm. do that one specific level of conservation, Mm -hmm. right? Because they're conservatives, right? (laughs) Fiscally or socially. Yeah. Track with me on that? Yeah. Yeah, language is pretty cool. Yeah. You know, you brought up object-oriented programming. And Christopher Alexander, yeah. you have a background in that? Um, so my background is actually in innovation. What does that mean? Uh, <laughs> I'm innovating right now asking questions, so go for it. It's true. So I had previously in my past life, before I became an energy worker. Um, you already jumped. You got to the punch. Why'd you tell everybody? Now sorry. they already know. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Sorry. What'd you run? Shh, just pretend you like you didn't. You didn't hear that. Surprised. It was energy less. Yeah. I'm actually just <laughs> a strip. No. Um, <laughs> uh, um, folks, I've been duped. <laughs> I've been duped. Uh, no, I used to, I started a pretty big social innovation conference. Okay. Back in New York um, that was looking at innovation across different realms, domains, from fashion to music to technology to business, and how they could be applied towards uh, positive social impact. So, Healthcare, the future of education, disaster preparedness, sustainability. Sure. Like that. Just little things. Yeah, it's kind of like big topics. Yeah. Right? Small stuff. What was the core across all those themes, though? Like at these conferences, I'm sure there was one thing that carried across all the themes. What was it? I mean, so personally, I think. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. Um, the, the idea, so the conference was called The Feast. That's cool. And the idea was always, from my perspective, I believe that everyone has an abundance of perspective, skill, talent, energy, capacity. And that when it's in the sharing of that, that we realize that abundance. Um, And so this idea of the feast was not so much A material feast? It was more of a- It was more feast of ideas and creativity and mm -hmm. sharing. So I think it was in the sharing that also people saw like relevant applications for things that were different from their context, right? So like Paul Farmer from Partners in Health uh, came, who was like foundational to developmental health care, as we know it, international developmental health care. So work in, worked in Haiti, worked in um, different uh, areas all over the globe. Um, and he saw like the founder of MakerBot speak Mm -hmm. and thought, aha, like I could use 3D printing technology to make sterile syringes in Haiti, right? As a response to like disaster. Yeah, sure. I mean, they reuse them all the time in India, so I get it. Yeah. So, Mm -hmm. but just like things like that, where it's like, oh, because you shared that, there's a new possibility. Right. Um, But it's only in sharing, especially across domains that that's possible. You don't have to tell me twice. Uh, run a data sharing company, so yeah, there yeah, I you get go. that. I won't tell you again then. Yeah, you don't have to. <laughs> it's like beating a dead horse, you know. So, you know, do you continue doing these conferences, or are those a thing of the past now? So I am still gathering. I'm, I'm foraging. A, I'm a gatherer, convener mm-hmm. at heart. Um, so my deal is like bringing people together. It's like I, something that I can't help but do mm-hmm. um the context of those gatherings is different so it's not just like how do we solve all the world's problems it's more like how do we become more whole people and beings in deeper relationship with each other and the planet and how does that enable us to create innovations companies art whatever you want to create but from that place of deeper connection and do you think that like people are lacking wholeness in a mental, physical, and spiritual sense? I think so. I think we're tell me more. I think we're um, highly compartmentalized 
Um, Define that for somebody. Don't assume everybody knows your vocabulary. Sure. Thanks. You're welcome. I will. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know you will. Um, so well-educated so stripper. Good. Thank you. <laughs> good point. What what the hell is wholeness, right? Mm -hmm. um, wholeness is the capacity to embrace, love, hold, be with all parts of ourselves. Okay. Um, and I think that uh, a lot of you know myself included, we have parts of us that we would rather not admit we're there, like prefer that they existed. But they are. But they are. So what do you do? Fight it? No. No, you integrate with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. You want to you explain what integrate means? No. <laughs> I think I've done about 350 episodes on integration anyway, so okay, I'm sure the listeners understand that one. But yeah, you love it. You love it into that wholeness, right? Like sure. you bring it into the fold and you're like, hey, you're part of the fam. It's all cool. Yeah. That, no, it's really cool. And have you found just like, through your personal experiences, when you live and practice those aspects of the self and the way you think, yeah. that other people pick up on that naturally without you having to force it upon them? Yeah, I think it starts with like a, just like noticing a different sense of being or presence. What, and, do you, what does that mean? Um, so, like when it's I hang, self awareness, when I hang out with people, like, you know, I'm, I'm generally pretty calm. And so our, our systems co-regulate, right? Our nervous systems. Do you find me calm? <laughs> You're pretty chill. Mm -hmm. Am I making you nervous? <laughs> no. 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 No, not at all. You have a lot of energy though. You bet I do. <laughs> Especially when you start with those questions. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of focus. Isn't that the most important thing to have? Well, I don't know. Focus allows you to control those energies, control you interact with people, the planet, your mm -hmm. emotions, thoughts, feelings, perceptions, find spiritual perceptions, all those things. Yeah. Is it about control or is it about just presence and being with it? Pure focus allows me to be in the present. Okay. <laughs> Energy's there, but I still want to be calm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tap into it when you want it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally. Also, oh, keep, keep going. Sorry to interrupt. That's okay. I, I forget what I was talking about. Can My I bad. Have a sip of that water? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Einstein's head. Great. Um, so we were just discussing about like leading and living by example. Oh. Mm -hmm. Right. So do people experience something different when they're with me? Yeah, that's correct. So my I have a fundamental principle. Yeah. Never ever try to step on someone's free will. Oh yeah. Or try to curb it. Yeah. Or try to bend things so that they work in your favor by coercion. Sure. Because I don't think that's respecting of the life for the human being. Yeah. A vessen, a uh, German word for essentially like a spirit being. Mm. And I think that if I'm going to do that, the best way that I can teach mm. is by being the best quality of a human being and leading by example. Mm -hmm. And then when someone comes to me and asks a question, mm -hmm. that's when I'll answer. Oh, rather yeah. Rather than just forcing it upon them. Oh, yeah. I generally... Don't even really talk about what I do. I know. That's why you're here today. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to make you talk about it. I'm going to course you into talking about it. But I mean, I think it goes back to what we were talking about as far as action, right? It's less about the talk and more about the doing and the being. You don't have to shit on people that are left wingers. It's okay, right? <laughs> I know. I love that. Like the beginning of this podcast is like, there are plenty of liberal minded people who are doing beautiful and amazing. Go ahead. Qualify well. it. I'll sit here for the next 10 minutes while you qualify. <laughs> Should I just take notes? Everything's okay with what I said. Let's no one judged me. It. Let's talk about it. <laughs> it's all good. No one's judging. No one. Do, don't want anyone getting canceled, right? As long as you, no one gets canceled here. We post everything. <laughs> and you know, as long as you're objective, you are truthful mm. and you don't step on someone's free will. Yes. Respect them as a human being. Say whatever the hell you want. Great. Okay? Okay. And if it jars them, it's because it's the truth and it was supposed to be said. Otherwise, what are we going to learn? I'm with you. So this goes back to the this goes back to what you're saying about being with other people and leading through example. I think one thing that I've learned slash I'm, it's a it's an ongoing lesson is there's nothing to fix. No. There's nothing to fix in anyone else, even, you know, and it's, it's challenging, right? Because you're, if you're a compassionate person, 
someone else's pain is painful. And you're a go-doer, then you got a dangerous combo. Exactly. You're like trying to get in there, like rolling mm-hmm. up your sleeves. Being like, I got this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a stripper on a mission. I'm going to take care of this mm-hmm. for you. Just <laughs> wrestle it to the ground, you know? <laughs> and it's like, that's not, it's not your problem to solve. And to, and I think that's why I've started talking less about this stuff. It's just like, you know what? I mean, like, here's another conscious, aware being having this like wild experience. And mm-hmm. it's like not my job no. to do anything about that except be here with them for some reason. And like, yeah, if they ask her if something wants to be said, then great. But it's not because it's trying to accomplish anything per se. No, and everybody is exactly where they need to be at this very moment. Mm -hmm. All in their own totally respective different stages of evolution. Right, and they're perfectly capable of. But some choose just not to take that capability and step into it. Some choose to just say, hey, I'll take this life and maybe wait for the next one or the next hundred. Yeah, which is their prerogative. Totally their choice. Again, free will. Mm -hmm. Down to the development of their spirit and their consciousness, right? Yeah. Yeah. You can ask questions. Always ask questions. And then Socratically, you can teach within those questions. It's true. And then when people ask you a question, <laughs> you fucking give them all. You tell them everything. You're like, oh, it's my chance. It's my opportunity. One of the questions that uh, my coach offered to me, she's like, you could ask, like, how's that going for you? <laughs> it's a great one. It's a good question. It's a really good one. How's that going for me? How's well, that me, going for you? I can, let me tell you how it's going for me. <laughs> better sit down. Got to buckle up for this one, you know? Well, I mean, I think that the I think that the thing that I do like offering people is a space for reflection. And I think that that is something that people are sorely lacking and that um, I don't know why I have this capacity, but I do have like a sense of spaciousness. What do you mean? Um just like, I don't know if it's like within my own being or I'm sure, you know, Gene Keys, like my, my purpose is like this, like stillness, it's like still space. And, um, it feels like something that I can offer people pretty easily. It's just reflective space. Like in a physical environment or just being around with you? Just being around. Very cool. Yeah. So no one knows what you do. I yeah. Briefly touched on it. <laughs> What is it that you do do that affords people, one, the opportunity to be a part of the space, Mm -hmm. and then two, understand what ray of light even means, what the context of that is? Yeah, that's a big question. What do I do? So I'm I'm pretty much a channel, I guess you you could say. Like a TV channel? Kind of. There's an antenna. Mm Mm-hmm. It picks up a signal. Okay. The signal that I pick up is, uh, you know, enlightenment based energy and awareness. Okay. And um I have yeah had the great fortune of having multiple lineages of this sort of transmission based which again is like transmission, right? Same thing. It comes through and hits the antenna and like comes through me. I'm like pretty much just a piece of metal. Um except you're a crystalline structure that's made of fluid and bone. <laughs> I said like. I know. <laughs> Just being precise here. That's what, being I, objective. that's what I am. Yeah. But I'm like a piece of metal, like in a lightning storm, right? And so it's like it hits me, comes through, goes to you or whoever slow is slow, being. Slow down. Hold on a second. You said multiple lineages. Yeah. You saying this is a repeat practice for you in this life? So I have – so – by repeat, pre- well, the things the there have been multiple modalities that have been served up to me on a silver platter, like literally all the like I didn't go out seeking to be an energy worker and like learning this stuff. It was just like all of a sudden there was a Reiki practitioner at the hospital that I was at with my father, mm-hmm. and they trained me in Reiki at the hospital for your father. Kind of, yeah. And and because I had an intuition, I was like, I think I want to learn this. And they had asked an intuitive, and that intuitive said that it would be helpful to my process. This was before I even knew what what the hell an intuitive was. So you're telling me in your your previous life experience, mm-hmm. okay, not lives experienced, but yeah. previous life experience, yes. 
you had no context of anything around Reiki, none of the stuff, no light body work, anything no. like that. No. You tell me you're standing on, where's the hospital? Yeah. Where? Oh, in Pennsylvania. Where in Pennsylvania? Uh, Foxville. Foxville? The, the Fox, Foxville, I think, is the Fox, Fox Chase. Oh, uh, Fox Chase. The- South 76 Blue Route. All good. Know where it is. <laughs> so um, that's cool. And you're in there and you just happen to cross paths with this lady at a time when your your father's admitted to the hospital? Yeah. Is so he you, still, you is want he the, still you around? You want the whole story? Yes, he is. Okay, good. Yeah, now I want the full story. All right. So I'm living in New York. I am I am like, you know, I do yoga, but I don't really, you know, I grew I grew up spiritual, but I sort of- What does I, that mean? I grew up Christian. And I was like, ah, this, this Christianity thing doesn't make any sense, right? So by the time I go to college- What I part like, about it? You're blowing Every, past all the good stuff. All right. You want, There's you no want, rush. You want the I, want, st- okay, I want you to talk story. to me and I want you to talk to all the other people that are listening so we can understand. All right. All right. Okay. So as a kid, mm-hmm. I grew up Christian. And um, even when I was a little kid, like I would like feel things in the room, but I didn't know what that meant. So you had a fine perception of things? I guess so. Mm-hmm. I thought I could control the wind with my hands. Super cool. I had that same sensation when I was a child. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like I, I would feel like something in the room, but I didn't know what it was. And I would like turn on the TV real loud because. You wanted to cover it up. Yeah. Too unknowing at that moment. You got no one to teach you. Keep yeah, going. Exactly. Yeah. And again, grew up Christian, was like super into the Christianity thing, like went on a missions trip. Really? When I was in middle school, I think. Because, you know, it was, I was. I felt the spiritual essence of what was going on, right? Not so much the ideology and the dogma and everything else. Well, I mean, I was trained in that, Mm -hmm. right? So that's what I knew. But then actually it was the missions trip, ironically, that made me question everything. I like this. Because I was like, why would God make all of these people to go to hell? Like. That great. doesn't make any sense. Great question. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. I don't have to go into it, but yeah, great question. <laughs> <clears throat> so moved away from it, from Christianity, which I was what I understood as spirituality for a while. And sure. Did the social good thing, you know, because I still cared about stuff and the planet. So I, I started this whole conference thing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, did yoga. So you stretched. I stretched. And, and, you know, I would like go outside and like smoke a cigarette with my kombucha after yoga class. Fucking kind awesome. Because of you know. <laughs> I was a New Yorker. Fucking cool. Um, and, you know. Menthols? <laughs> no. Menthol. All right, good. <laughs> Just making sure. God, no. You give me like an American spirits kind of vibe, maybe exactly. marble blacks. Not I don't yellows. know. Yellows. yellows? Mm-hmm. Wild. <laughs> cool. Um, and, you know, at that time in New York, I did have some friends. I had a friend whose dad helped start one of the first ashrams in the country, actually. Really? And went up there at some point to visit, just to hang out, you know, with with him and a couple of other friends. And I actually, I looked around and I, I had this deep sense of like community even then that was like, why aren't we all sharing this? You know, like there's a pool and there was all this like beautiful land. Mm-hmm. And, and there was also part of me that was like, why, why isn't there a farm here? Like, why isn't there any food growing? So I helped start a, a small like farm garden at this ashram That's with, cool. with my friends. Cause I was like, let's do a thing. And we built some cabins and did a whole thing. Um, still was living in New York. Didn't believe in energy work at the time. Again, like I did yoga to like de-stress as a New Yorker. But aside from that, I was like, this is all woo woo bullshit. And like, you know, I was in, I was a New Yorker. So I was like, I get it. Yeah. No. Too hard for the world and all this. Yeah. Strange things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I know what's going on anyway. Um, fast forward to a moment burning man. (laughs) Sorry. Of course it's burning. Of course it's a moment at burning man. Okay. And, uh, I was at the temple at the time and this was like the, uh, so it's 2013. The theme is cargo cult, uh, which is this story about this these airplanes in the fifties that flew over these islands, I think in Indonesia or somewhere, and uh, dropped all this cargo um, from 
from wartime and you know landed on these islands and all of these islanders thought that it was like the stuff that came from the gods so the theme of this burning man god uses nails and wooden crates cargo cult and, and parachutes spam and yeah yeah um is america god america is god yeah <laughs> that's a twist um and so i'm i'm sitting at the temple the sun is rising and that year the sierras were burning and so there's this huge cloud of smoke mm -hmm. in the sky. And the, so I see the sunrise and then it, it disappears behind this cloud of smoke. And I just like lost it. What do you mean lost it? I just Break started down? bawling um, and just like had this like deep sense of grief um, that I hadn't experienced in a really long time. In which way? Um, Explain to me the grief. It was, it was this grief that was like, we have this perfect planet and we fucked it up and it's over. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was kind of grieving for that. And, and also, you know, like at Burning Man with like all these people with all this stuff from Walmart and it's just like, what yep. are we doing? Mm -hmm. You know? And so I'm like sobbing and this shaman looking man comes over and like takes my hand and I go from deeply sobbing to like still as a pin, you know, like you could hear a pin drop, like just like super baseline calm in a way that as a New Yorker, I don't even know that I had felt before in like two seconds, right? Like maybe like two to four seconds. It was like, douche. And I can feel your emotions right now. Yeah. 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 It was Definitely a, a little heavy. It was a beautiful powerful moment and and like he got up and left i have no idea where he went mm -hmm. and eventually i got up and i started walking around the temple space and i had this like awareness that was just like we're never going to fix anything until we heal each other and this was like the peak of my social impact days right so i was like kind of went away with that without really knowing what that meant, but it was just like, it was just like, bing, like just hit. Right. Um, and so I went back to New York and did this conference. It was our biggest year. Um, had all of these different people involved. And, um, and then a few weeks after my, my dad had had what was supposed to be a relatively small procedure that just went terribly wrong. Um, back up before it had gone terribly wrong. I just, I knew something was up and I was like, I need to like get there, you know, like to Pennsylvania, sure, get a sense of what's going on. And, um, before I did that, I was like, maybe I should learn some energy stuff or something so, so that I can try to help. So you're saying before you even drove down to Fox chase to Correct. the hospital, mm -hmm. you had a feeling that you should learn some of these things in the event that you could possibly help your father, given that things were going sideways. Correct. And you show up to this hospital. Well, before I, before I did, I took, I looked up online. I was like, what is, what's out there? And there's like a Reiki 101 mm -hmm. class that was really just like a, like, what is Reiki? Right. It wasn't, a, it didn't teach us or train us in a little bit of the history and stuff like that. You know, I was like, what's energy. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so took that, went away Shit hits the fan. Like, you know, they're like, get the family here. We don't know what's going to happen. Right. So my friend and I rush to the hospital and then starts just almost a month long process in the hospital of like surgeries and all the things. And so again, I had, I had yet to even receive Reiki and there again, happened to be this practitioner at the hospital who offered Reiki to like family members and trained all the nurses and stuff. And, you know, I saw this sign. I was like, okay, I guess I'll try this energy work thing. Cause I'm stressed. Um, and so, yeah, I had my first Reiki experience at the hospital, which was really palpable. Right? What was it? Um, what happened? I mean, I guess all I'll say is, so now I know that I'm pretty clairsentient, which means I feel things. Mm -hmm. And my experience was really just like 
a lot of like energy, warmth moving through my body. Um, there were other aspects of it, like moments where like I felt like multiple, like I could see multiple outlines of myself like coming into one mm -hmm. um which now is like oh right like maybe multi multiple dimensional right aspects of self coming into alignment but i didn't know what that meant anyway so i had like a couple of sessions over my you know several weeks there and yeah and then eventually uh the, this man who was there is, was actually just the pharmacist who would just take his time to share Reiki with people. Um, went to him and I said, you know, I think I want to learn this. And he was like, I was going to see if you wanted to learn. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so I was attuned to all three levels of Reiki within like two weeks. What does that mean? So there are three levels of Reiki. Um, the first is about sort of like bodily healing. The second level is about sort of healing the emotional body. Mm -hmm. And the third is the sort of spiritual body. So you're saying these are the dimensions of the outlines that you saw coming together for you? Possibly. I mean, I think they're, the, as far as the Reiki system, mm -hmm. those are the three tiers that are offered. Um, and so traditionally, one would just receive level one Reiki. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, take some time to integrate that, maybe like, you know, and then you'd receive level two and that would be maybe two years to integrate and then level three. And so, you know, there, there are definitely people who are offering it all together. Now things are changing, but it was still a lot. <laughs> and how quickly did you progress through this process? Again, I, I did it in two weeks. Yeah. That seems pretty quick. It was pretty quick. Is it abnormal? Um, the like, pharmacist would have been like, this is abnormal. It is, it is abnormal. Okay. Not, not typical. Um, and so my eating habits changed. What do you mean? Were you uh, eating like shit before? I mean, kind of, I was drinking like two cups of coffee a day and like, you know, I was actually, I was, I mean, I was eating pretty well, but from a spiritual perspective, like I was all of a sudden, like, like I pretty much became vegan for a while. Um, so you wanted to become more aware of what you were putting inside of yourself? It was just like there was so much energy that it wasn't even a, even an awareness thing. It was just what my body could absorb. It was like no meat, no eggs. I quit smoking cold turkey. Like everything kind of changed from that moment, including going back to my team in New York and basically – you know, trying to like do this work thing that I was doing that seemed, you know, really inspiring and all around good and just being like, this is all wrong. Mm. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know what right is. But I can tell you that this is not this right. This is not it. Yeah. And I, I like physically in the same way that it was like, I couldn't eat meat. I couldn't like, I didn't want to smoke anymore. I could not get on the plane to like go talk to a sponsor or whatever, you know, like, Microsoft. It's like, just like physically could not do it. It was like the door slammed shut on everything that was like out of alignment. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was hard. Well, I think because you've rooted so much of your life and your perspectives and energy and say that older world. Yeah. You have such a dramatic shift and it's like, I know I can't go back to it. But this is all I have known. And now I'm stepping into the unknown with something I'm, I've just learned at like rapid pace. Yeah. yeah. I'm not even needing the same. I'm frankly not even the same person that I was, you know, last week. Yeah. And, you know, I think there's also, yeah, it's like, who who are you? What do you do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no idea. In search of definition of self, right? Well, it's also, you know, I think that's probably why they generally do Reiki, you know, like, and give you some like space and time to integrate because you need to like change your whole existence. Right. Um, and adapt to like what that means for like, you know, all your relationships and all of your, the work that you do in the world. It's, but you know, I got sort of thrust into the deep end and it was like, now you only do what is in alignment. <laughs> So and so go figure that out. <laughs> that means ditching the partner. Ditching. Oh, well. 
Oh, well, what? No, that, there's a longer story. So eventually I wound down the feast. Got it. Um, which was a big deal. You know, a lot of identity tied up into that mm-hmm. world and everything. Um, moved to California as a as a good spiritual you know seeker might be want to do. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, again, did not know anything about the inner work stuff and like how everything worked. So I started dating um, – a dear, he was now a, he's now a dear friend, Justin, who was a psychosomatic, who was a not psycho, somatic uh, therapist in training at that time, and so just like blew the doors open on on a lot of stuff for me, you know. Like I remember uh, meeting him for the first time, and he had like a goddess statue in his room, and I was like, "What? What is this? You like, know. who is this guy? What are you doing with this thing, man?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But introduced me to the whole world of like, you know. That there, you know, I remember the first moment that I realized that I had a belief, like hearing the belief that like, whatever. What do you mean by that? So I'm just, I'm going to share something which you have no context to because it's your first time on the show. Sure. I'm vehemently opposed to anything that has to do with the word belief. Okay. Let me explain to you why. Okay. When you have the word belief, belief says that someone is telling you something which is a supposed fact or how the world works. Yeah. And you accept it as such without doing the work yourself under your own self-responsibility of thought to go figure that out and say, is this actually the objective truth? Right. Which it's not often. That's why I say it's a belief because, you know, so the belief that I heard in my mind. Comprende. All right, good. With respect to, you know, I was in this relationship with this person. I heard something to the effect of, see, you'll never be loved. And, and it was, that's a big old belief. Yeah, exactly. And it was, but it was the first time that I heard and noticed something like that and was like, what is that? Mm. Like, that's obviously not true or of me or, but like, but that's not of Ray came from somewhere. And where did that come from? And so that sort of set me on the path of, you know, I was at this point, I was mostly just doing Reiki on myself and, you know. I, I would sort of find that belief within me and kind of send it energy and anyway, a whole sort of self-guided process okay. around healing. And then this is a long story. You told, me to, you told me to give you a full story. So from there on, again, I was living in the Bay and people would just kind of send things my way. They'd be like, Hey, you do Reiki. There's this thing called Reiki Tumo. You should come check it out with me. And um, that starts working with the Kundalini. And so I was like, okay, cool. Let's go check it out. And um, eventually got trained in it again. Like not because I so was trying to. So another one of those to. things that just showed up and you start to fall into it. Yeah. And the alignment's a little bit more natural and passive than forced. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. And so does that lead you to where you are today? Yeah. So that kept happening. First with Reiki Tumo. Then another person was like, hey, there's this thing called Cap. There's this teacher. He's coming to town. He's really powerful. You should check him out or do an event together because you do event stuff. I was like, okay. So came, stayed at my house. We did a few events. I got trained in that. You know, Then another friend is like, hey, there's this guy called Steel. He's coming to town. You should check him out. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of how it just kept going. Um, hey, there's a new movie that got released? Nah, I don't want to watch it. <laughs> boring. Yeah, boring. <laughs> um, so yeah, so eventually, right, like by my fourth energy modality, then it's like, okay, I guess I'm doing this energy thing, Mm -hmm. you know? And for a while I was running sessions in LA, like public sessions at yoga studios. Cause I was like, I guess this is what I do now. Um, (laughs) right. I was like, I guess I'm supposed to like be on Instagram and like thin and pretty vegan doing yoga stuff. (laughs) Um, (laughs) um, but the pandemic kind of sent that screeching to a halt halt. And that's when I moved out of LA Mm -hmm. and uh, this partner and I broke up, which is great. We're still collaborating and everything. Justin, correct? Justin. Yeah. You'll meet him. He lives here in Santa Fe too. He followed you here. Cool. He wouldn't say that, but. So it sounds like to me as a third party observing. He lived, he lived here for 10 years before, which is all good. He's great. We do like all the same energy work modalities. So that's funny. Um, so pandemic happens, energy work like screeches to a halt. And all of the 
I had in the meantime been mulling on like, like what's next, right? Like what am I supposed to do here? And all of that sort of started coming together bit by bit in the pandemic. And I had still, I was still working out my aggressive make it happen nature, right? So I, I, I tried to do stuff a couple of times, tried like a few iterations of um, what feels like coming through is like community space, space for transformative experience and expression and space for co-creating, maybe even supporting, investing in new works um, and like a cooperative sort of structure. So all of that started coming through during the pandemic and then I get launched. Oh, then I go on this road trip with some friends, which stops here as one of the stops, our final stop in Santa Fe. And um, I go out and I meditate on the land. Just one morning, we're like out on a hike. Has this become a normal practice for you meditating at that time? No. So you just have some impulse to go meditate yeah. on a land. Yeah. Now on the land of the land or like, how are you describing we're on just, the land? We're just on a hike and, yeah. and I just stop and sit on a rock. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just sit and meditate for a minute. It's a good place for that out here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Big old view. And I hear a voice that says, um, I have something to teach you. What did the voice sound like? Did you hear it through your ears? Was it, it in the center of your mind? Was it screaming at you? It was kind of in the center of my mind. It felt, um, you know, I'm not really clairaudient. So it was surprising to me mm -hmm. to hear a voice. And... It, it felt relatively neutral, which is um, made me feel like you know this isn't something, this isn't something that has any motive, right? Uh, and the the awareness that came through was like this is the land talking to me, like the land said, I have something to teach you. Okay. And so now was the voice that you heard? That was the voice that I heard. Did it have a uh, like a tone to it? Was it masculine or feminine? The energy of it was neutral. Did you hear it in your own voice or a voice separate from yourself? A voice separate from myself. You see why I'm asking this? Yeah. Because people are going to be curious because many people say, I hear things. Right. Well, are you fucking schizophrenic right, right, or right. tell me what did you hear? Yeah. Which is why I preface, like, I don't usually hear things. I understand that. No, so no, when I, I, when I, when I did, it was like, okay, I'm paying attention. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but yeah, again, it felt like a calm, present, kind of caring, um, but mostly just like um, present energy that, well, you know, obviously expressed something that was for my benefit. So this begs two questions then. Yeah. Did you feel something physically yeah. when that message came to you? Not really. Okay. So just a message. Yeah. Okay. And then did you learn something from it? From being here? From the message. So I have something to teach you, right? Well, the lessons have been coming from being here. Very cool. Yeah. Very, for very sure. cool. Very much um, about grounding and presence and slowing down and finding space and uh, being with the land. Yeah. Which also uh, means being in relationship in general. Because I feel like our relationship with the land mirrors our relationship with self, anything, and everything. Other people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's one and the same, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Land allows you to exist. Yeah. Don't fuck it up. Yeah. <laughs> so things are coming together. You start to understand, like you've tried these, if I remember correctly, four different modalities mm -hmm. of energy work. Yeah. Have you dived into one specifically or? Mm. Yeah. Hold on now. Yeah. Did you combine all four of them into something that is, or I'm going to take mm -hmm. these aspects of it and design energy work around that that's highly specific to me and what I can do for others? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So- 
the journey continues to unfold. Okay. However, um, so I can still do each one individually. And what, are, what are the four? Can you name the four for the people that are listening? Sure. So Reiki. the first was Reiki. The second was Reiki Tumo, which starts to work with the Kundalini. Mm -hmm. The third is something called CAP, which stands for Kundalini Activation Process. Oh, CAP with a K. With a K. Understood. CAP. Mm -hmm. um, no exclamation point. Um, starts to work with the Kundalini. Mm -hmm. So that's a big visceral energy. And then the third is this Archangelic channeling work. Also, what I've noticed is that because I, there are other people who have also done all of these different modalities of energy, right? Including my former partner. Sure. Each of us has a different flavor, right? Like when you experience the energy work, each person is carrying a different energetic signature, mm -hmm. which is uh, exemplary of them, I think, and their, their spirit or their essence, as well as everything that they've attained. What do you mean by attained? Spiritually. Mm, comprende through experience, thoughts, emotions, feelings, stuff like that. Yeah, and just evolutionary process, right? 100%. So my cap teacher, for example, used to even say like, you know, he's done a lot of martial arts, was is still raw vegan. You know, he's a very intense energy. So when he does that energy work, that's what's coming through. Whereas there's another practitioner who is like, super feminine and like, or like every time she does this work, she like has an orgasm, right? So like <laughs> she started like doing what's, these uh, like orgasmic the activations. For this uh, person? 1-800-REIKI-FOR-ME. <laughs> you got it. Good and for her. So yeah, good for her. And so again, everything – you know, because I'm continuing to like study and that includes some recent like non-dual um, awareness work. That'll never end. Exactly. It'll, it'll never end. And everything that I'm able to embody gets also passed on, right? What do you mean? So the more I realize my own wholeness as well, the more that that gets also transmitted. So my- To others? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm just trying to be clear. I'm to yeah, what? To like others. To land people? Yes, what? To, uh, to the other people that I'm working with. Okay. So my particular flavor, you know, I am a starter. I'm a creative. I'm an innovator. Mm -hmm. Like everything that has, that I've done before comes through. And therefore I love working with people who are, are of that too, right? Who are starters and creatives and innovators. And so what comes through is, you know, there's, there's all the healing, there's all of the consciousness aspect, but in the same way that, you know, I don't, I'm not an orgasmic person. If you want that, you got to go to you gotta go to your Anastasia, friend. right? Yeah. Um, but if you want like a high level frequency connection with, you know, ideas from like a different, like a higher consciousness realm, if you want like a catalyst for creating and expressing, you know, making things in the world, especially the starter energy, right? I'm not necessarily like your like growth guy, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if you want to birth something, like that is a particular thing that I can carry through. It's right? really cool. Yeah. So that's, that is how this energy work has been expressing most recently is really like working with creatives and founders and artists and, you know, people who are birthing these really beautiful things into the world to do so from a place of deeper, you know, alignment and connection. And so tell me, I come to you, I'm a founder and you tell me that you're this radio antenna that connects with, you know, archangelic beings mm -hmm. and you also manipulate the energy. Mm -hmm. What's the experience like for me? essentially as a, a customer, yeah. right? If I'm going to make it transactional, right? If I'm, I've never met you before. I don't know anything about you, but I'm going to show up right. open to the idea. Yeah. What is this experience like for me? Yeah. So it can range um, anywhere from not really feeling much, although the work is still happening, to feeling tingles, seeing colors, 
feeling heat moving through your body. Mm -hmm. Um, You might feel a lot of energy moving through your body, right? You might sort of feel like kind of high, right? You might feel- I feel kind of high right now. Great. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like that's like a constant for you. (laughs) Yeah, that is a constant. Um, But you know, like when you, when you like have that sort of like tingly sensation, your, your mind is expanded. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of um, people who say like, you know, they experience like the most peace that they have in a really long time, or they experience like expanded possibilities or, um, you know, definitely like stress leaving the body, obviously. But some people also will see, they'll, they'll have downloads, quote unquote, if you will, of ideas or concepts or a way forward for the work that they're doing that is maybe a little bit different. And what has been the most prolific things that you have seen during these sessions? Is there anything that really stands out? One experience where like, holy shit, I was not expecting that. I mean, you know, people have, (laughs) people have like just puked all over you. Just like an exorcism kind of thing. I mean, yeah. What? (laughs) I mean, there, there have been everything from, you know, we in our culture, I think value big experience, but the most powerful things are sometimes subtle. So yes, I've experienced every, everything from like, I mean, like someone like exorcism style. Yes. For prolific. Prolific or profound? Prolific. I never said profound. I did have somebody basically like download like the next three years of their life. See, that's cool. Um, including a pretty big social movement and a fund and all sorts of other stuff. Wow. So that was really powerful. I mean, there were people who, you know, were like, I, I was told to like quit my job and go see the Dalai Lama, which they did, you know, like just, um, so let me ask you, is it always a positively fulfilling experience for the individual and for you? Or do you find that when you're doing the work, you become exhausted or it's, Mm it went kind of sideways and the message was more of a shocking one for the individual. Like what right. is it can't always be right. daisies and fucking sunshine. Well, ultimately. So if I feel bad, mm-hmm. it means that I got too involved. Okay. So again, my job is to not really do anything. My job is just to be a channel. So I try to get out of the way and I don't try to actually like see what's happening or get information. Understood. Um, so if I feel bad afterwards, which generally very rarely happens, I usually feel way better <laughs> after right. doing a session. Um, then it means that I was like trying to help them or fix something right from my identified self, right? which is like bad. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't do that because then you feel bad, right? Because you took on their stuff, mm-hmm. which I don't need to do. No. So generally feel way better. Um, shocking. I I haven't had shocking yet. I mean, like, again, the, what's happening because it's enlightened energy. Yeah. It's like, it's bringing things into wholeness. Right. Which means like just this like loving pure light energy that is like dissolving the, the illusions. Right, sure. Of separateness or whatever. Yeah. I the reason I asked because I don't do healing on people. Sure. And um I've been to channels, akashic record reading people, I've been yeah. to mediums. Mediums I'm not too interested in. Um and then uh you know, acupuncture. Mm-hmm. And I had one weird experience which left the doctor kind of like wigged out. So I'm laying there. Uh-huh. And uh she starts throwing the needles in me. Uh-huh. And she goes, I'm going to put this last one here in the meridian line. I don't know what she's talking about. Uh-huh. You know, I just had sciatica. I just need to get this fixed. Uh-huh. Right? She throws it in. I feel an electrical charge that goes through my body like I've never felt before. Yeah. And all the metal needles completely bend over. Oh, my God. So they, I don't know how, so they're in, but. They bend and she had to back, she backed away from the table and like had to like collect herself for a second. Yeah. And then she had to like remove them from me. Right. But the metal just completely torqued itself sideways. Whoa. She's like, I've never seen anything like this. I said, well, whatever you just stuck in me made me feel like an electrical bomb just went off in my body. 
Right. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm just saying like from those experiences, like, you know, you're healing others and you're the one being the practitioner. Right. Like, what is that like for you? And do you mm. feel like you're also, you're learning substantially through the process of helping others, you know, through their journey? Yeah. So the, again, I have the lucky benefit of not needing to do anything in the work that I do. <laughs> so you're, I, 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 sh I show up, I show up and the person just locks eyes with you and then they just go off on their own. Well, so I, I intend for the energy to come through and like, it looks like I'm doing things. So like my hands wave around and stuff, right? In what fashion show this is on video. So just like show me a little bit of the wave. Um, so like, like if we want to even just like channel like a tiny bit of energy right now, I mean, it's pretty calm for the moment, but like my hands will just shift. Don't not point because those I'm, fingers at me like that. <laughs> not because I'm, it's not me doing it. I get it. Right. So it's like, I'm just sort of like following and like listening and letting my body move. However, the energy is moving through me. And so does that energy like come off of your hands? Does it, is it radial or is it pointed? Cause when you're pointing at me, like, how should that make me feel? Are you just, are you directing it towards the person after you do something like that? It's more like what it feels like is there's energy everywhere, right? Like energy and consciousness makes up all, all of this. And really? Yeah. I'm choking. Yeah. When there's, when all, all that's happening is there's an invitation into the space of this more, of this enlightened, right? Like energy and consciousness. And sure. so kind of what's happening, what it feels like is it's like we're in this dance, right? Because the same stuff that's in me is in you, is in everything. Why do you think they called the universe? You. One song is what it translates to. Oh, really? Universe. Oh, yeah. So that's what it's that's what it feels like, right? So it's like there's this current that is moving through me that's also moving through you. So it's not that like I'm directing it. It's just that I'm being present with this energy that's moving through both of us. And if it invites my hand to move in a particular way, I'll do that. And is that enabling energy? on your side and or my side so to I would, respond. I would be yes. here experiencing this as you're doing these movements and essentially working with the things that you're intuiting at the moment. Yeah. And so I'm not trying to like direct or push or do anything. I'm just, my body's just responding in the same way that your body would respond. Okay. Understood. Purely yeah. conduit. Yes. And what do the these, this archangelic realm, what is, what does it have to do with it? Yeah. Is it just, did that spur up out of nowhere? Cause that's a really specific way to define something. Yeah. So that, um, so, I mean, again, that was just, that was one of the energies that found its way to me. Okay. Um, each of the energies has like a different flavor and a different thing that it seems like it's doing. So the Reiki is like much more harmonizing and kind of like has a healing quality. The Kundalini is like very alivening, right? The Kundalini is like yeah. pretty big energy. It's often more visceral. Um, the archangelic work feels like it's almost like a very fine tuned chiropractic kind of energy. Like it's bringing things into alignment Understood. in a way, but it's like very high frequency. Um, and if anything, you know, when I do all of them together, uh, it's, it's less of a, the the archangelic energy makes it less of like a big experience and makes it more subtle but higher frequency if that makes sense so do you determine this ahead of the time for the person that comes in or does the you know three different types of energy essentially yeah do those just happen you know as they happen appropriate to the person without you even choosing yeah cool yeah do you have return customers oh yeah very cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, the, the best thing is when people don't, right? Like when someone like just gets what they need and they're like, boom, off to the races. See, and right? that's, and that's what, what naturally leads me, leads me to the next thing here then. Yeah. Some are like, thank you. Exactly what I needed. This is the seed for me to birth the next phase of my life. Yeah. And others are like, I need more like guidance here. Yeah. You know, like Ray 
help me. Yeah. Now, do you explain to them in the fact that it's not you helping them, but them helping themselves? I don't want to put words in your mouth. Um, yeah. But like, how do you how do you view help essentially for these individuals? Yeah. So it's interesting because I'm just in the process of starting to shift all of my offerings around to be more teaching. Mm -hmm. um, because I think that really what people need is a way to engage themselves. Right. Right. Like, so even, even with the energy work, it's like, okay, like if you receive the energy work, but then you go away and you don't know how to engage what's showing up in your life, right? Like not as useful um, or that's the integration thing. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like, what is integrate? What does it mean? How do you do it? And so I, it's, yeah, it's not about me helping anyone. Um, it's more about just creating access. Um, and even I need it in moments, right. I'm finding like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll sit down and just do the energy work with myself because I need to just get straight, right? It's the same thing as working out. It's like, the, you know, like the world happens to you, life happens to you. And sometimes you just need to like clear things out absolutely, and resolve things, right? So I think that's, that's all that I'm offering is like, you could go for a run, you could do meditation, you could do a movement, ecstatic experience. There's so many gateways, right? Into this like more oneness connected consciousness. You could, you know, take some psychedelics and go for a hike. This is one way to access the energy. And what I'm learning more and more is that, you know, how do, how do I help people work with that, the energy and how it's showing up in their lives mm -hmm. and with their, the, their own energy, which is, it is emotions. It is right. Like that is like, there's so much energy in, in that. Like that is God, right? Like, that's what I've started noticing with the work is like, if I can just notice what's coming up in myself and see it as the divine, it's like, phew, just like, I mean, we have like so many millions of suns worth of right. Like energy within our own bodies. So yeah, I don't know if that answered your question. It answers the question. Cool. And so then if somebody wants to find out about your work, learn more about you apart from this, right? And, you know, where would they, where would they go to do that? How do they find you? What is your business? Yeah. Right. Like yeah. stuff like that. And is it just for people? Um, oh, good question. So I have a website. It's this is com. How do you spell Ray Chow? R-E-I-C-H-O-U. Okay. And um, that has like all of, you know, the off my offerings and stuff like that. I have a sub stack which I'm pretty excited about um, as a place to start sharing more writings and practices. And I also have a podcast. It would be fun to have you on it at some point. Sure. You can peg me with questions. Great. <laughs> it's like dodgeball. Yeah. Um, then I can experience the deluge. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm on Instagram at the moment. Um, also, this is Ray Chow. Uh, I will probably start doing, um, so I'm, one message that I've been getting is that I, my work wants to transition into a foundation. So I'm working on that shift in the process and in this moment. And part of that involves offering like free access uh, energy sessions, which will be more of like an introductory level, uh, more of like a meditation space. So like a 101.1? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Entry level, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, the, I'm transitioning my sub stack into like more of like a, I guess, I don't know, it's like 22 bucks a month for, um, a monthly session that you can access ongoing and then like courses and, or just exercises and things like that. Very cool. On a monthly theme. Very cool. So, and I also think it's important that, you know, if you put in the work to create these things that people should pay you for it because okay. there's energy in it and there needs to be recompensation for that energy itself. Yeah. And it's a way I think that's like accessible, you know, for people to also keep working with the energy. So this month's theme is going to be like from frustration to focus. So how does one work with the energy? You're of wondering why I'm focused all the time? Because <laughs> I'm always frustrated. There you go. <laughs> Burn that fire hot, baby. <laughs> as hot as it gets. Um, 
And so, so it's like, what is it to work with that throughout the month, right? To really kind of like transmute and transform things, hopefully also in community. So that is one way that people can access the work. Um, I've also been working with clients on a one-on-one basis. Okay. Um, and with organizations. So clients usually are people who are birthing something and want that support in doing that in a way that is, you know, integrous and more easeful and more clear and more in alignment with what it is that they really want, right? Because when we create stuff, there's all sorts of ideas about what it has to be or, you know, I mean, everything. Define it before it even exists. Exactly. Sure. So um, that's one way. And then um, I have started working with ventures um, on alignment as well, which is for more like founders, uh, leaders who are either maybe they're pivoting or maybe they're, you know, experiencing or needing to like move through a growth phase. Um, And that's really about helping the founder, right, understand like what alignment is for them. Very cool. With this organization Um, and then supporting alignment energetically for the organization and sometimes even for the team itself Um, because everybody, you know, has their own purpose in the world and attachments to the organization as a way of realizing that purpose. Yeah. But then also the organization has its own, right? Like desires and needs. So. Okay. Yeah. I'll make sure I share all this stuff and people find you easy access. Great. Through the gateway. Thanks. What is your hope for people in this planet? Oh my gosh. One sentence. Um, just to know that you're loved and to know that, um, yeah, we're all doing it together. Inextricably interlinked. I like it. Mm-hmm. Did you enjoy being on the show today? Super fun. Good. I hope you, I hope this is good. I think it was, uh, I think it was a pretty decent show. <laughs> A quick hour, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Cruising. Oh, hour and seven. Look at that. Well, thanks for joining us today. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're most welcome.